Hi, that eerie blue glow is the effect of something incredible. An alchemist's dream come true, one element changing into another. And if that isn't unreal enough, antimatter is also being created here in my living room. Let me explain. This video features radioactive items. Only handle them yourself if you know what you're doing and accept the risks involved. Respect the radiation and keep the dose low. Avoiding radiation altogether is however impossible in the real world. Finally, I have something new for a video about radioactivity. My latest video with focus on it was back in 2015. Man, time flies. The new stuff is a new radioactive element for my collection and a Geiger counter, all donated by Radiascan. Thanks to them for making this video possible. With the 701 I should finally be able to get a reading on my hottest sample, the massive pit splint sample with over 400 grams uranium oxide which my two old Geiger counters gave up on. But the 701 should also be sensitive enough to detect very low levels of radioactivity. This is where the memorial from the intro comes in. It has two small vials on it filled with radioactive hydrogen, the radioisotope tritium. Not uranium, thorium or americium like my other samples. Let's test it with the SOEX Defender first. This will only detect gamma and hard beta radiation, so it's not useful for low level radiation. It has no clue that there's something radioactive near it. 0.16 microsieverts power is a normal average background radiation at my place. Here is the Gamma Scout. Despite its name, it will detect alpha, beta and gamma radiation, making it much more suitable for detecting low levels. Hmm, it goes a little higher, but this is still within normal background radiation. How about the Radiascan 701? This has a pancake probe with a fairly large surface to detect alpha, beta and gamma radiation. I think it's safe to say that it noticed something radioactive near it. Impressive since tritium vials only emit radiation with an unusually low energy. As mentioned, tritium is hydrogen but a special radioisotope of it. Normal hydrogen is a very simple atom, as simple as it gets. One proton in the nucleus and an electron whizzing around it. No wonder it is so light. A small part of natural hydrogen is a heavier isotope with one neutron in the nucleus. This is called deuterium and you may know it from heavy water where the hydrogen in the water molecules is the deuterium isotope. Now tritium has two neutrons in the nucleus and this is a problem. With twice as many neutrons as protons, this is a neutron-rich nucleus and they tend to be unstable. Tritium is no exception and only has a 50% chance of lasting more than 12 years. The way it stabilizes itself is fascinating. One of the neutrons feels like a third wheel and spits out two particles, an electron and an electron antineutrino. By getting rid of a negative charge in the form of an electron, the neutron has gone from a neutral to a positive charge. It has turned into a proton. The hydrogen is now all of a sudden helium. This change is what makes tritium radioactive, since the emitted electron leaves the atom with enough energy to be destructive, ionizing in what we call beta minus radiation. The tiny antimatter particle, the antineutrino, is not ionizing radiation since it will just pass through everything with no destruction. It is in fact so hard to detect that three Nobel Prizes have been given for it so far. Alright, so it is the emitted electrons I can detect coming from the tritium vials. No, not directly. The glow is coming from a phosphor coating on the inside of the vials, absorbing the electron's energy and releasing it as visible light. This is known as radioluminescence and the phosphor decides the color of the light. The electrons from the tritium have so little energy that they will not make it through the phosphor coating and glass walls of the vial. But what am I detecting then? Well, I am detecting something that is famous for going through stuff. X-rays. 
More specifically, I am detecting Bremsstrahlung. Bremsstrahlung is not particles like beta radiation, but electromagnetic radiation with energies between gamma radiation and ultraviolet light. It is emitted when the electrons coming from the tritium are slowed down by atoms nearby. When the electrons lose their kinetic energy from being slowed down, the energy is converted to electromagnetic radiation instead. Bremsstrahlung is not blocked by the phosphor or glass, so a highly sensitive Geiger counter will detect it as ionizing radiation. Right, so the 701 passes the test at low intensities. How will it perform at high intensity? For this, I have brought out my hottest radioactive sample. Nice in a cold and boring winter. Okay, it is actually not radioactively hot enough to be warm hot, but it sure will make the Geiger counter sweat. I will start with the Gamma Scout since it did the worst back in 2015. It simply went down to zero and never did a proper reading near this piece. Will it do better this time? Um, that's no good. The battery is drained to a point where the beaver is drawing too much current for the screen to work. That's better. Whoa, the battery is not happy. Hang in there, buddy. You can make it. Oddly enough, it is doing better with low battery. It is still climbing instead of going down to zero like it did four years ago. How high will it go? We just passed half a millisievert per hour. Excuse the bad glare, I was not near the camera. Looks like it peaks at close to 720 microsieverts per hour. Why don't you change the battery, I hear you say. Well, here's how you change batteries in the Defender. So easy. And in the radius scan. A little tighter, but still very easy. While on the back, I would like to show you a detail. With the lid off, alpha, beta and gamma radiation can make it to the sensor. If you want to block alpha particles, you put the lid on like this. If you want to block beta radiation too, you use the metal plated part of the lid. Now, only gamma radiation will make it through to the sensor. Here's how you swap batteries on the Gamma Scout. You don't. This has a soldered battery. You are supposed to send this back to them for a battery change and recalibration every 10 years or so. I haven't looked into the price of that service including shipping, but I feel I would be better off saving the money and buy a fresh updated model now available with a rechargeable battery. I could attempt to swap the battery myself and make a video on it, if you are interested. Alright, it is the Defender's turn. Last time I found out it will max out at 320 microsieverts per hour.
And there we have it. It is maxed out again. Now, for the first time, the Radiascan 701 will meet my Monster Pits blend. I love how immediate the Radiascan is. No waiting for a minute for the reading to build up. Just under 700 microsieverts per hour within seconds. Highest reading was 721, or over 6000 times the average background radiation at my place. Respect. It seems like the Radiascan will handle anything I throw at it. Not bad, considering it is priced between the Soex and Gamma Scout. Link in the description for more info. Thanks to all my Patrons. My videos wouldn't be the same without you. In the future, I would like to buy a scintillation spectrometer, so I can detect the different radioisotopes in the samples, not just detect if something is radioactive or not. With one dollar from enough of you, it is possible. Check out patreon.com slash brainiac75. Thank you for watching and subscribing. Click like if you didn't dislike the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.